Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Agent again, and today I'm going to be telling you about how to put the Yakima Control Tower roof bars on top of a Mazda 5. This is a 2012 Mazda 5. It has four fixed point anchors for the roof rack, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on how to do So as we unboxed everything, we've got the 48 inch round bars, we've got the set of control towers, and we've got two sets of number 11 landing pads. Um, each landing pad has a different number, and these number 11s will fit on the fixed mounting points of the 2012 Mazda 5. Alright, on this Mazda 5, it doesn't have the pre-existing roof rails uh, that go from front to back, uh, but what it has is these fixed mounting points. And the way it works is they have this little cover on there to keep dust and debris from getting down in there. Uh, there's a little notch right about there uh, that you can go in. I'm just going to use my little pocket knife here. Um, you go in, get behind the notch, and just kind of pry it up a little bit, and then that whole piece will slide back. Just be careful not to cut yourself. You could probably do that with a fixed blade screwdriver or whatever uh, flathead. But anyway, this is your mounting point. That mounts directly into the frame, and the screws that came with the landing pads is what uh, is going to go in here. There are four of these. There's one here, one closer to the front on the other side, one directly across, and one diagonally across the roof. All right, according to Yakima Fit Guide, um, this uh, Mazda 5 takes the M6 by 30 bolt. And the first thing you're supposed to do with it is run it down into the hole to make sure the hole is clear from debris or paint or anything like that. And so, that one looks pretty clear, so we're going to pull it out and get ready to set our landing pad up on it. All right, the next step is when we take this, um, this bolt and we add the washer and um, I guess it's another washer, but it's the plastic one. The metal one goes on first, and then the plastic one goes. The instructions say to be sure that the convex part is down. So, like that. Alright, what we've got here is actually the landing pad itself, and we've got the rubber base for it. Um, these attach just like this. There are little holes in there that line up with the notches on the actual landing pad, and it just sticks together like that. There we go. Alright, now, the way that this attaches is it's got two little pressure points right there on the outside or on the inside that press outwards. So what you've got to do is you just got to grab it and pull on it and they pop right out. See those right there? Um, and that's where your bolt is going to go. Now this this next step is going to test your limits of humanity. Um, it's pretty frustrating. I've tried it for, for quite some time now and I got it to work once. And I should have left it and let that be the video, but um, I didn't have the camera on. So what you want to do is you want to line up this control tower right here, or this landing pad, excuse me. And you want to keep a pretty firm pressure on it because this bolt is fairly short um, whenever it comes to getting it in the actual hole for um, where it's supposed to be. So um, you may have to do some wiggling. Anyway, it goes in there, and then you screw it down. Be sure to turn it backwards until it clicks, just so you're not cross-threading it. Uh, I've done this several times, trying to get it to work on camera. It won't, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to put it on, and then we'll come back to it later. All right, what we've got here is the control tower itself. This is what's actually going to mount into the landing pads right there. This is a pretty ingenious design. Um, there are two little tabs for you to put your fingers on. You pop it open, and the whole thing folds out. As it does, you'll notice that these little murals in here, they, uh, they expand and lock into the landing pad as you close it. When you open it, they go back in like that. There's also a little uh, bolt over here that adjusts the tension on the bar itself. So um, as you loosen that, this piece um, moves out of the way and you can slide your bar in. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to um, get two of these, put your bar in both, 
and then go attach it to the roof. We'll do that next. All right, so the, the slogan on the box that I opened was, there's no such thing as the great indoors. And um, one of the things that I find very interesting about this rack is this bar, I've never installed a roof rack before, but this bar is extremely heavy um, for what I expected. It's hard, it's, I mean, it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna break, and I guess that's what you want whenever you've got a rack uh, with some cargo on top. But uh, if you ever find yourself in the great outdoors and, and need to just beat the brakes off of something, this will probably do it. I'm sure that's not in the Yakima um, instructions or guidelines, but just so you know, this could be a very formidable tool in the outdoors. Um, so what I've done here is I have attached the two control towers. Um, this one, I have snugged up the bolt just to where it's not going to wiggle around and slide on me. But this one I've kept loose. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach it to the mounting points that I've already put on the car. And uh, then we'll tighten it up after we get it all together and all on the car. All right, as we put it on the car, we're going to remember it is very heavy. So it would be best if you had a friend to help you with it. But these just slide right down into the control towers. And I'm going to lay it and let it rest over there. And there we go, there's one. Once you get all the bars no up mounted up there, you'll notice that the bars on either side are uneven. So what you want to do is you want to measure, take some measurements, or if you want to, you can eyeball it. Um, but figure out how to make it even on both sides. Um, otherwise, your OCD wife might just uh, take it out on you. So keep that in mind. Just a point of order. Um, it appears that on this 2012 Mazda 5, the front rack is a little bit wider than the back rack. So if you're taking measurements, uh, you'll want to keep that in mind. The front and the back is not going to be the same. So um, what I've done is I've evened them up on both sides. Now what you want to do is you want to come up here and tighten up the little bolt right in there. So it's going to need... Um, to be tightened evenly on both sides so there you go the next thing we're going to do is put in our lock cores and here's how that works all right so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pop out the, the lock cover you're going to take your lock cylinder you'll notice that there's a little knob here that fits into the hole right there all right each set of locks comes with a control key that opens it like that the key or the lock will slide in. Make sure you're good and tight there. The lock slides in and the control key comes out and that keeps the lock in place. Now, after that, you take your coded key, put it in and turn to the left and that effectively locks your bars closed. Do that all the way around and you're good to go. The last thing I want to talk about is the bar end caps. These are there to keep the road noise down. They are stylish and black plastic. Um, so anyway, you just want to pound these in there. They don't want to come out, that's for sure. I'll just go ahead and get these not down in there. And you can see the control tower itself seems to be taking the abuse very well. So we got that end cap in. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll do that to the last three of them, and we're good to go. Uh, just so you know, I was, uh, I was using my own 5mm um, Allen wrench on an extension. Uh, as I opened the end caps, that's where I found the included 5mm Allen, uh, Allen wrench. So, uh, if you don't have one of your own, open up the entire package 
and check in the end caps because that's where I just found mine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Enjoy the great outdoors and we will see you next time.